Hi friends, I had a video in which I showed the simplest way of converting an ordinary computer power supply into an adjustable one. A video is useful, I advise you to study, the link will be found in the description. But computer power supply units are built according to different circuits, hence the problems with rework. Each instruction is given for a specific power supply and universal methods of modification don't exist. But what you can do if you have an exotic power supply with a non-standard circuit and an incomprehensible PWM controller? This video will show the method of converting a computer power supply into a laboratory unit without modifying the computer unit itself. In this project, the computer unit is only a power source and the voltage and current stabilizer is a separate board. The stabilizer board is self-made. The appearance of the self-made printed circuit board doesn't spoil the overall impression of the design, but ordering a PCB at the factory would be very useful. You can use the services of the company GLC PCB, which quickly and very qualitatively will produce for you printed circuit boards of any complexity. In this we were convinced ourselves during our recent visit to the GLC factory. We made a video of the full production cycle. Link is in the description. I will add that to order PCB is very easy. Just go to the site, download Gerber Archive, select the options and that's all. Prices start from $2 for 10 pieces. A link to GLC PCB can be found in the description under the video. But the problem is that the computer power supply provides a maximum of 12 volts and for a normal laboratory unit you need at least from 20 to 25. So how to be? I promise that we will not necessarily change the block and I will keep my promise. Therefore, we don't need to know the topology, the type of PWM controller and other details. The most important thing is that the power supply unit must be in working condition. First, open the power supply box, remove all unnecessary wires, leaving only a few black and green wires. Here is a diagram of the standard power supply. Pay attention to the rectifiers. In any computer power supply, double Schottky diodes are used. That is, we have a common unipolar rectifier with a middle point. Such a rectifier has many advantages, but in order to get at the output, for example 12 volts, the winding should consist of two identical parts, each at 12 volts. If you use a bridge rectifier instead of an original one, then the voltage from the rectifier will no longer be 12, but as much as 24 volts. This can be verified by checking the total voltage on the secondary winding of the transformer. For measurement, I use a multimeter of the true RMS class, which is able to correctly measure the high frequency voltage regardless of the shape of the voltage. A conventional multimeter for this purpose is not suitable, as it is intended for a sinusoidal signal and the frequency of up to 1 kHz. But in this case the voltage is rectangular and the frequency value is greater few times. Further, in these points we drill a couple of holes, solder the wires, which are connected to the input of full wave diet bridge. In the circuit it will look like this. The factory rectifier on the computer power supply board is left unchanged. As a rectifier I used for diodes HER505. This is 5 ampere high speed diodes. The usual ones here don't fit. We need ultra-fast, fast or at least impulse diodes adapted for operation at frequencies from 100 kHz or more. Schottky diodes are ideally suited. After the bridge we use an electrolyte with a voltage of 50 volts and capacitance of a couple of thousand microfarads. The most important point I want to emphasize, the computer power supply is protected against short circuits and this modification doesn't affect this protection in any way. It will still work correctly. After this alteration, we have a switching power supply for somewhere around 25 volts and with short circuit protection. 
The rectifier board with the capacitor is attached to the stabilizer board, which will allow adjusting the voltage and current from pure zero. Of course, you cannot bother and buy a ready-made voltage and current stabilizer board for 5 amperes or more. They are available at online stores and cost cheap. But I preferred to insert a linear stabilizer, which I made in one of the previous videos. There were two videos about the stabilizer on my channel. In one we assembled a classical circuit with a current of 3 amperes. And in the second I increased the output current to 5 amperes. It's up to you to choose any version. The links to both videos will be in the description. There are also links to the purchase of linear and pulse stabilizers models. I put the 3 ampere version since I collect this power supply only to show you the method and I leave the 5 ampere board for another case. Yes, I know, to cross the switching power supply and the linear stabilizer isn't quite well, but nobody forbade it. Yes, the linear circuit is heated, but the heat can be taken off efficiently provided that in the computer power supply we have a fan. By the way, be sure to isolate the transformer from the radiator, otherwise we will have a positive voltage on the power supply case and there will be problems. The transistor fixed to the radiator and the radiator to the case, added voltmeter, power terminals and that's all. But this is in short, in fact, I spent a couple of days creating this power source. A little later the whole process will be shown. But before that, let's do a small test. We set the maximum possible voltage at the output of the power supply unit. The current limit is also at the maximum. Now we make short circuit at the output. The voltage has dropped to a minimum and the current is about 3 amperes, which is the heaviest mode of operation for linear power supplies. The output is about 3 watts but more than 70 watts of power is dissipated on the transistor. We will wait a few minutes, then take the thermal imager and look. The temperature on the radiator is about 75 to 80 degrees Celsius, despite the fact that we have active cooling. But later tests showed that the power supply can work without problems for a long time in this mode.
The power switch closes the green wire to any one of the black ones, which causes the power supply to start. The voltmeter is powered by a 5 volt standby source. Before the first startup, the fuse on the power supply board is necessary to replace by 40 to 60 watts incandescent lamp. Friends, a huge request to observe extreme caution when working with high voltage. Before touching the board, make sure that it is disconnected from the mains and the capacious electrolytic capacitors on the board are completely discharged. I think it makes no sense to test this power source. Everything already has been shown in the video where I made stabilizers. Links to the video, as already said, is in the description. Unit gives 3 amperes without problems. The stabilization of current works fine. The presence of active cooling makes it possible to use a relatively compact heatsink for a power transistor. Is it possible to call it a laboratory power supply? Yes, of course. The adjustment of the voltage from 0 to 24 volts. The current is limited from 0 to 3 amperes. Ripple is within the norm. The adjustment is very smooth. What else is needed? Friends, I remind that in the description of this video you will find a link to the first video with a complete process of reworking the computer power supply and also to the video in which I collected linear voltage and current stabilizers. A full archive of the project, links to components for assembling a similar power source, as well as ready-made laboratory power supplies are in the description. Please rate this video, tell your friends and join our electronics team in social networks. They will help with any question. The link is also in the description. Now I have to say goodbye. Until new meetings, with you was Kaisyan TV.